The following program is made possible by the faithful friends and supporters of Higher Aim. Coming up on today's edition of Higher Aim with Dr. Kurt Dodd. Let me tell you something. God doesn't want you to slow down. He doesn't want you to rest on your blessed assurance. He wants you to serve and be involved and represent Him and count for Him and live for His Son, Jesus. God wants us to realize who we are. Here's what the scripture says. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans chose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. They are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless wild living, and they heap abuse on you. But they will have to give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached even to those who are now dead. Hint, hint. Interesting phrase. We'll talk about that later. Let me read it again. Just go back there. God, thank you very much. For this is the reason the gospel was preached even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to human standards in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be glo the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But... Rejoice inasmuch as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any other kind of criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name, for it is time for judgment to begin with God's household, and if it begins with us, what will be the, the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. You know, one of the greatest problems in the Old Testament was how people thought of themselves. You know what cost King Saul, the first king of Israel, his throne? Because he was more concerned about what other people thought of him rather than what the Lord thought of him. He was a man pleaser. He wanted the applause of other people rather than the applause of the king. And he even decided that he would sacrifice uh, offerings to the Lord. And Samuel, the prophet, told him, 
God would rather have obedience than sacrifice. You and I need to realize God wants us to be obedient, and therefore we are to be mindful all the time that we are representing him. How are you doing on the representing? Do people know you're a believer? Do people who you hang out with really know that you love Jesus? Do you ever talk to other individuals about the Lord? Be mindful that you are representing the Father. He goes on to say, if you speak, you speak the very words of God, the logia, the oracles of God, the, what the Scripture describes as the words of God. You do so as you are speaking the very words of God, but you are to do it in the strength of God, not in your own power. If you teach, you are to teach not in your personality, or God may use your personality, but he wants you to lean into his strength. It is in his strength that the word of God is received. When you and I are serving We are not to do it based upon our energy, but rather the power of God. God is glorified when we literally serve representing him, being mindful that we represent him in his strength. Let me remind you of a story that I think I've told you before. My first revival that I ever preached uh, was at a little church called First Baptist Church, Algoa, Texas. I mean, a little bitty town. In fact, it was, I don't even know if they had a red light, but it was on the way to another town. And I had done the, the music the previous year for a revival where a former bandito, a motorcycle gang officer uh, had uh, gotten saved, and he preached the uh, revival, and I led the music. And so the pastor called me the the next year and said, we'd like for you to come lead the music. And I told him, I said, I I don't do music anymore. I've been called to preach. He said, well, then come preach. I went, "Okay, okay. I had never, I didn't have that many sermons. I only had one, two, okay, maybe three. And this was a week-long revival. So I had to study and study and study. And I'll never forget, I got up there uh, to, to preach on the fourth night. And quite honestly, I got to tell you, the first uh, three nights of the revival, no one walked the aisle. No one came down. I mean, Nobody even came down the aisle to go to the bathroom. I mean, there was no movement at all. And then I, I remember talking to my would-be father-in-law, and, and uh, I said, I don't understand it. I thought God called me to preach. And uh, nobody's responded. He said, young man, you need to re- realize you're just a messenger. It is your job to deliver the message. It's God's Spirit who is going to draw people. Just do your job and trust God to do his. Well, the next night I got up, Thursday night, and I preached on the second coming of Jesus. But it was probably the worst message that I've ever preached. I lost my place three different times. I dropped my notes twice. Had to reach down and pick them up. And I finally got ready to give the invitation And I gave the invitation like this. If you're here tonight, and you probably don't want to be, or if you're here tonight and you felt God speak to you, which you probably didn't. (laughs) Seriously, this is what I was saying. And you've never met Jesus, but I guess probably most of you are Christians. But if God has touched you and you want to come, you probably don't. We're going to sing a couple of verses of an invitation hymn, and I want to invite you to come if you really want to. So let's stand and sing. And so 
they began to stand and sing. And I went over to the pastor's chair that was on the platform, and I got down on my knees, and I began to pray like this. Oh, God, I am so sorry for dropping my notes, for missing my place. I thought I was prepared, and I just made a, a wreck of this thing. What, if you give me another chance, I'll try to do better. And I began to apologize to God for what, how I had preached and what was done and, and what I said. And I said, Lord, just please forgive me. In Jesus' name, amen. I stood to my feet, and 13 people had come in this little small church of 52 people. 13 came and gave their life to Christ. By the time the week was over, there were over 50-some-odd people who had come to Christ. The church doubled in one week. I will tell you, I look back on those moments in my life and realize it has nothing to do with me. I am just representing the Lord, and sometimes in our greatest weakness, God's power is seen in the greatest form, and you need to remember that. When you feel like you have failed, let me tell you, God always wins. And you and I are to serve in his strength and not think that somehow or another we have got to be perfect because we don't have to be perfect. It's in our weakness often that God is seen greater and higher lifted up than any other time because God wants to use you. He wants to use your heart more than anything else. Serve, the Bible tells us, but you need to be mindful that you are representing the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you serve, do it in His strength. And whether you sing or whether you teach or whether you preach or whether you do helpful things to be a blessing to other people, do it not in your strength but in the power of God. Lean back on him and allow the Spirit of God to, to give you the, the unction to move forward, the unction to serve, and the desire to honor the Lord. You represent him. Be mindful of that. I also want to share with you another thing. Be insightful. Be insightful. In verse 12, there is an interesting verse. He says, don't be surprised when trials, fiery ordeals happen in your life. As if that came uh, to you as a shock. Don't be surprised. Now, remember, he is writing this to believers. In the lives of believers, you're going to have fiery ordeals. Maybe they will be financial. Maybe they will be physical. Maybe they will be marital. Maybe they'll be with your kids. Maybe they'll be with your parents. Maybe they'll be with your employees. Maybe it will rip you up from the inside. You ever gone through a fiery ordeal in your life? Anybody? Anybody here? Probably all of us, the truth is. The Bible says don't be surprised when you go through difficult seasons in your life. <sighs> like for some reason that God owed you to a party that uh, when you got saved, it would always be cake and cookies. Uh, that's not what the Bible teaches. So when you go through difficult seasons, <coughs> excuse me, be insightful. You, you see, something happens when um, we go through difficult times. It's this. When you and I go through trials in our lives, they not only serve to knock off edges in our lives that don't look like Jesus, but you need to know they come with the territory. Did you capture that passage of Scripture um, that said they, they are surprised that you don't join in with them? Uh, did you see that in there? That's referring to the people you used to party with. And now they're looking at you going, what's going on with you, goody two-shoes? What, what's, I used to get drunk with you. What's, what, 
What are you, what's going on with you? You and I used to have all kinds of sordid conversations. Why don't you join in any longer? Why do you back away like you're better than us? Be insightful. Don't be surprised when you go through trials that affect you physically or, or even mentally. When your life belongs to Christ, you need to realize <clears throat> that when you serve Jesus, your life is going to be so different that it is going to agitate people. And they're going to have conviction in their lives because they're not living like you. And so, therefore, their real problem is with God, but they'll take it out on you. And you need to realize that when you go through trials, sometimes God is using that to develop your character, but he is also using that to share the message of Christ. Because when you go through trials, how you handle your trial will speak volumes to those who don't know Jesus. They'll wonder, how are you handling this? What gives you the power to have, maintain a good attitude in the midst of great pain? I don't get it. And literally, God will use that in your life. And you need to wonder sometimes in your life if you're not going through some fiery ordeals. I love the story of John Wesley. John Wesley was a, a, a traveling preacher. He was a Methodist circuit-riding preacher. and loved God. He and his brother Charles made a deep impact on the kingdom of God in the early days of our, our country. And one day, he was riding his horse along, and he began to think, you know, I haven't been persecuted for quite some time. I have not had any opposition in quite some time. And that began to bother him. And so he got down off of his horse, held the reins of the horse, and he got down on his knees by this hedge and began to pray, oh God, I haven't received any persecution or insults or opposition in so long. Father, I just want to know, am I out of fellowship with you? Is there sin in my life that I need to confess? I don't understand why I have not had any opposition. Father, speak to me. Well, just then, as he was praying, there was a guy walking on the other side of the hedge, and he saw John Wesley on his knees, and he recognized him as a preacher. And he thought to himself, that preacher, he is a, he's meddling in my business, and I, I'm just going to give him what for. And so he picked up a brick on the other side and tossed it over the hedge in John Wesley's direction, and it came down right by his head and hit the ground with a thud. And Wesley didn't miss a moment, and he said, I thank you, Lord, that I am not out of fellowship. <laughs> Let me just tell you something. The Lord wants us to live expecting that because we are different and because we are representing Christ, that we're going to have opposition. You really will, unless all you hang around with are believers. And if all you hang around with is with believers, I mean, get a life. Get a life and get involved in the lives of other people who don't know Jesus. If you just stay around it with believers... First of all, you're going to become critical of other believers. I mean, put your energy and attention not in how other people are treating you, but rather the mission that God has sent you and me on, and that's to represent him to a world that desperately needs Christ. And when you represent him, you're going to get pushback, I promise you. But you and I are to continue on the journey. But be insightful when you experience persecution. And then the Bible says, here's the last one. Here's the last B. Are you ready? Can you believe it? We're at the last B. And here it is. Be joyful. Be joyful when everything is going good. No, 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 no. That's easy to be joyful. The Bible says in verses 12 through 19, be joyful in suffering. You're going through a difficult time, be joyful. You, when whatever you do, Remember that you represent Jesus. 
And literally, if you are going through suffering because of the name of Jesus, rejoice, 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 and be glad. Uh, that's what the Scripture says. In other words, you are identifying with Christ. Be joyful even in the midst of suffering. And don't be ashamed of the name of Jesus. You represent Jesus. Let me say it again. You represent Jesus. Who do you represent? Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. Say his name one more time. Jesus. We're a Jesus church. You're a Jesus people. Represent Jesus. And don't be ashamed. Don't back down. Don't take prisoners. Represent Jesus. And if that offends people, so be it. Because the Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. We represent, say his name with me, Jesus. You and I need to be joyful when we go through suffering, when we're representing Jesus. You and I need to realize that we are to praise God at all times. That is critical. Wouldn't you like to be around people like this who are all the 10 Bs that we've been talking about? I mean, wouldn't it be a joy to, to be around a person who could be joyful and insightful and mindful and be different and all of those things? Oh, well, let me tell you how. Let me give you three phrases. First of all, dig in. Dig in to be committed to Christ. Decide, I am going to be a full blown follower of Jesus, I will not look back. Dig in to commitment. I would also tell you, dig up sin. Dig up sin. Because the one thing in your life as a believer that will take you to the sidelines and put you on the bench is when you allow unconfessed sin to stay in your life. It's going to be difficult to hear from the Lord when you harbor sin in your heart. So, be open with the Lord, Lord, and just say, Lord, is there any sin that I have committed that is separating me from fellowship? You, you will never be separated from relationship, but your fellowship as a believer can be uh, uh, affected when you and I ha harbor sin in our life unconfessed. And that's why we are to allow the Spirit of God to have freedom in our heart to reveal to us if there's anything that needs to go, any attitude that needs to go, any actions that need to be dealt with. Dig up sin. And then dig out. Let the power of the Spirit drive you, correct you, and empower you. Don't stop digging. God wants us to be men and women who know what it really means to be godly. Get your shovel and get digging in and digging out and literally dig up. God wants us to learn what it means to be committed. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you a little quick story and then we'll end. When I was in college, one of the things that I did during the summers was to uh, work construction. Uh, and my brother-in-law who worked with Monsanto Chemical Company, uh, recommended me, got me a job as a day laborer uh, there in that chemical plant. And uh, I got to go on the college crew, and that meant to do some of the dirtiest work that you could ever imagine in that chemical plant and in and, and all things that are on the chemical plant. There were a group of us who were in college, and there were a group of uh, older guys who had been uh, day laborers for all of their lives. And I'll never forget, they would often pair the young guys with the older guys. And I got paired one day with, with an older guy, and they took us outside the plant and took us to uh, a dirt tank and told us that we were to dig a trench uh, in a certain direction and a certain depth. Uh, and that was our job. And they gave us a shovel, and they took off. And so I jumped in and began to shovel and get after it. And finally, the older worker looked at me, and he said, slow down. Slow down. I said, I, 
I'm going as slow as I can, but I want to get this over. He said, man, we got to make this last all day because if we don't, they'll get us and put us on another job. So slow down. And uh, I couldn't. I wanted to finish that trench. And he looked at me again and he said, slow down. You're making me look bad. I said, there's no one out here. He said, just slow down. I said, I can't. I want to finish the job. There's dirt that needs to be moved. And he looked at me and just shook his head. I will tell you, there are some in your life who are going to say, slow down. You don't have to be so off the wall serving Jesus. You don't have to uh, be full of energy. You, you need to calm down, sit in the back, just stay seated, be blessed. Slow down. In fact, if you start to serve, you're going to make me look bad. Slow down. Let me tell you something. God doesn't want you to slow down. He doesn't want you to rest on your blessed assurance. He wants you to serve and be involved and represent him and count for him and live for his son, Jesus. God wants us to realize who we are. His greatest assets in this world happen to be his children. You think about the 33 years of Jesus' life, and for three and a half years, he poured his life into 12 men. One didn't make the trip all the way. And he entrusted all of those men, that handful of men, to make a difference in the days to come when he would be gone physically. Jesus trusted 10 men, 11 men, and the women that were with them. And something happened at Pentecost, and the world has never been the same since. And God wants us to live like that, knowing that our lives count. I want you to say this out loud, and we'll close. My life counts. Say it out loud. My life counts. Say it again. My life counts. Let me tell you why. All because of Jesus. Have you ever wanted to share the gospel with someone, but you weren't sure where to start or what to say? We know how intimidating it can be. So we've created a resource to help walk you through the conversation. Our new CPR cards are a great resource that guides you through sharing the message of the gospel with helpful points and powerful scripture verses. The cards also include a salvation prayer on the back that you can lead someone through if they choose to accept Christ. To get your free copy of this resource, give us a call at 1-800-491-4400 or go to our website, higheraim.org and click on the free resources tab. So call or click today and allow us the privilege of helping you to share your faith with others as you encourage them to make the decision to follow Christ. Thank you for joining us on Higher Aim with Dr. Kurt Dodd. For more information and free resources, please visit us at higheraim.org. The preceding program was brought to you by the faithful supporters of Higher Aim.